Okay, okay, stop. I'm done. I'm done. I gave it a try and I failed. There will be no more dancing on this program. You can all collectively breathe a sigh of relief. Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Smoke Report. If any of you are still watching at this point, I'm your host, Jay Todd. And you know what? It's almost warm up here today in the Pacific Northwest. Almost. Warm enough that it's made me excited. Maybe, uh, Maybe a little too excited. I start breaking out into jiggy dances and stuff. But but speaking of excitement, notice the segue? Yeah. Speaking of excitement, we have another interesting show for you this week. We're going to be talking about those new anti-smoking ads coming into your living room at night. You know the ones I'm talking about. Got the people with the hole cut in their throat. Yeah. But first, I wanted to discuss what's going on in Indianapolis where electronic cigarettes could become the latest casualty of that city's smoking ban. Let me stop right there and repeat that. Electronic cigarettes could become the latest casualty in that city's smoking ban. Mind you, e-cigarettes produce absolutely no smoke, but whatever. Don't try to think about it. It's your government at work. Despite the praises of some former smokers who showed up to defend the e-cigs, and despite some city council members asking that the e-cigarette language be removed, the proposed ban is now on its way for approval via the mayor's office with the electronic cigarette ban included. Yep. <clears throat> Such actions make me wonder about what's really going on in this country. I guess things like this also cause columnist Michael L. Marlowe to ponder the situation as well. He recently wrote an opinion piece encouraging the FDA to uh, butt out of e-cigarette therapy and wondering why the feds seem so obsessed with these products. So I started thinking on it and then it hit me. I remembered e-cigarettes aren't taxed like tobacco products. Ah, they aren't regulated by the FDA yet either. And as we all know, most any vice that the government can't regulate and tax, well, it's just gotta be evil, right? We'll be back in about 40 seconds. This week, the World Trade Organization upheld an earlier ruling that the United States attempts to ban clove cigarettes discriminated against Indonesia. I don't know how this story fits into the rest of the show, but I sure found it funny. The American government now seems to have a hard-on for cloves. Yeah, guess they can't tax those yet either. A and finally, Many of you may have seen the ads recently put on the air from the Center for Disease Control with people who have had strokes, heart attacks, lost limbs, or have that hole cut in their throat because of their use of tobacco. And while I appreciate their thoughtfulness at trying to save us from ourselves, I must say, I find the ads to be more insulting than effective. Maybe, I'm just thinking out of the box here, maybe the uh, anti-meat establishment could start showing ads of cows being slaughtered. 
Then, then we could tax beef at a ridiculous rate. Huh? Or maybe we could get, I don't know, someone who's been severely injured in an automobile accident to uh, go on TV and talk about wearing seat belts and helmets. No? Well, why not, people? I'll tell you why not. Because it would be offensive. It would be in poor taste. No one would tolerate it. But with smokers, oh, with smokers, hell, just throw those guys to the wolves. Who cares? We'll see you all next time on The Smoke Report.